Hello Fridlings, I am Claude from Chicago, and we are here for real people with real creativity in real time. Fredlings, never give up and I won't on you. And today we have ourselves an absolutely astronomy, astronomical builds and rides all coming to you. I had to take six hours of footage and shrink it down. So this is probably one of the fastest time lapses we have ever done going 2,000 times the normal rate just to condense it in time, about 14 minutes of time-lapse footage and then a live section at the end. But we are finally completing our Budget Park first addition to the park. So this section that we are currently working in, the first part where you walk in, was created from 1921 to 1959. And everything in here are the rides that are original, and some have been revamped, but for the majority of them, they have been original. I think the only one that we would say would be new would be the Sky uh, Ace, which is uh, the one that we built on the last episode. So you can take a look at that. It's right there in the background. But the first ride we are going to put into this park is Swift Drifters, also known as Clowns of the Clown, and temporarily as The Spin. But we wanted to go with the classic building here. This is something that would have been originally created and then renamed in 1935 to Clowns of the Clown. But it, Clowns of the Clown is like uh, Bows of the Clown, if you know what that is. And uh, this ride here is super simple, something you would see originally created in one of, one of a park like this, because it is so simple. It's just a basic machine that whips people around inside of the ride and we'll go in there for a first person look a little later on but i wanted to go with some of the vintage style paintings vintage style wood and vintage style roofs up there now we then go into a dock and this dock took me an absolutely eternity to build um, i'm not even sure if we'll get it in this first time lapse but it took me forever to create because of how i wanted it to look and it it was it's, it's, it's really nice i'm not a lot of guests come over here but it is really nice and on the dock itself we're gonna have two buildings and a arcade or a gaming alley so that guests can come on down and play some you know basic games you would see at a carnival and in the budget park they would be sort of normal we got to put more games inside of our park uh somewhere else and that will be linked in the description, the link to the, all those games that we get, and you'll see that a little bit later on. Inside of our first main building, which is the tallest building, which you can see inside of the thumbnail, is a gulpy soda and a monstrous fries, so that guests will come down here and come can eat and sit on the pier while they eat, because I want to incorporate seating and benches so that all guests have an opportunity to go everywhere in the park. We do some custom wooden trim on this. We duplicate it around. It was actually quite annoying on how to get this together, but this would have been one of the original docks here on the park. So we go with that nice old classic vibe as you see on those doors and on the painting of the wood. It's sort of doled out. It's been there for a while. Maybe it's been repainted once or twice in the history of its park, but not very often. And it's by the water, so the lucky lakes are making the building a little bit unlucky with the wear and tear. And then over here, I debated about doing a little gaming, a uh, little arcades, but I think it was just a little too cluttered. So we decided to go against this, but they could be, these rides could eventually be added. But here are the gaming rides that I was talking about from the uh, pack. So this will be linked in the description if you want to download these. These are do require the spooky DLC, but we come in here and make ourselves have a little bit of a retouch and our own little addition to it by removing the roofs from them and making our our own little custom roof so it matches the pier. I think that you should do this in all the parks even if you use um, content from other creators to make it your own. Um, it's easy to just download stuff from the workshop, throw it in your park and say done, but I think this game is much more than just you know a game where you can just add stuff and ride and make coasters. I think the game itself should incorporate the aspect of creativity and challenging yourself to make something unique or even just copying stuff 
it's going to get your creative juices flowing and make your own park because we've done so many Disney parks in the past and eventually we'll be going back to the history park but just making your own little budget park or your own little fun gaming places there's so many opportunities in this game to create your own that you should take advantage of it while you have a chance up here we use vista points because we obviously guess we just walk by this or walk through this and just not care about it but i wanted to add some vista points so that guests will come down here and you'll see that later that guests will come over here and stand at the vista point and look at the game and it looks like they're playing it and in that last building we really went through it quickly but inside of there there is a restaurant selling sushi and some of the chief beef and i think some hot dog squad stuff so that guests will come down here and eventually once we connect the dock to the other island it will obviously come to fruition a little bit more to give this a little bit more life we go inside of our animatronics and find some people that are sitting down at some chairs and benches underneath them so it looks like they're like uh, carnies in a sense or operators of the ride it gives it just that little bit of touch of life that most people will probably skip over but adding a vista point they're adding some animatronics that look like people which they are people in this case really makes it pop and then we add another ferris wheel to the park i know we already have one but this is the star ferris wheel that you see in the disney the classic disney uh, land and um, we just kind of give it our own twist on it and just change up the colors to fit the lucky lake theme obviously it's a budget theme park so we're going to try to incorporate um, flat rides into this park which we really didn't utilize in uh, any of our other parks they were all sort of custom rides but the flat rides do give a touch of life considering that many of the big budget parks even have flat rides too uh, they just get changed the theming a little bit and but they're all ex relatively the same just go up and down up and down and up and down now this is one of our last builds that we are going to do here on this episode but not the end of the time lapse per se this is the log flume ride and the log flume ride seems to be way more difficult than you would imagine imagine excuse me um, because the log flume ride only goes by 12 meters on the flat bits so you really have to come up with a creative way to incorporate the log flume into your park so what i wanted to do was have a splash zone so that guests when they walk by they can get splashed and go around and this was another creative thing that i tried to do coming from the side but i just decided to go against it just looked a little bit too cheesy just going into the water like that or to the lake and it did connect but i just didn't really enjoy how it looked um you can add pillars into the buildings which you see in budget parks and all other parks too and here's a little test ride the only test ride you'll probably see a footage of it but it just didn't look right going into the lake. I try to keep the lakes um, relatively clean in a sense. And apparently I didn't record the, the version of the log flume that I end up actually using. But you'll see the ride at the end of this video. The last thing you'll see is the how it works. But the log flume ride sort of goes around. It has three drops, which is more than we ever created. And... It is unique because it does have that little splash zone that I wanted and it's way better. You don't even need the splash down section. You just you just need the ride to just finish. That's all you need to do for it to, to look good. Um, then we go through and obviously this is the last section of the, of the park and this is obviously when Lucky Lace got some sort of budget and the adventure was added into this which is this is the real grande adventure. So this is where the budget sort of picks up a little bit. Obviously, originally being created, there was no roofs in on any of the flat rides or anything like that. There was just the wooden coaster, the carousel, some spin cups, and then they had added in, you know, the um, added in the uh, Swift Drifters, which is Clowns of the Clown. And then obviously, in a second here, I did say this was going to be the last build, but no, I was wrong. Um, there is the going to be bumper cars, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, one of my favorite rides at Disney World is the uh, Safari Ride, uh, the Jungle Cruise, and I wanted to give that touch here in the park by adding in a down plane, which is something that is very iconic, and you hear it while on the ride. So I wanted to keep that alive here and keep everything going. The Log Flume Ride as well, I believe I put 10 
whole 10 uh, log flumes on it so that guests could come on and wait. It is one of our most popular attractions and keeping that here makes us so nice and just to see that everyone wants to come down here and ride this ride. Over here by the splash zone, we do put up a chain link fence because obviously guests would probably try to jump in the water or touch the water when it's coming around. That's obviously a hazard, so we do need to incorporate some sort of safety. Simon coming in clutch once again in this stream, coming in with the splash zone sign and a bunch of other signs you'll see throughout the park. And I'm very thankful for him and me, and anybody that creates any sort of signs. If you make if you want to make signs for the park, it doesn't matter. Uh, just go into our Discord, go into Planet Coaster, put a sign in there. Let me know what sign you want to make first, and then I will let you know. Um, but most of the signs that people do create, I do try to incorporate into the park somehow in some way because this is your park. Remember, I'm just the guy that streams and makes it happen. You're the ones that comes up with the ideas. So we obviously have Moshe, Nosha, and Osha running the parks uh, indirectly, making sure everything is safety and up to code and uh, just doing those little things and allowing you guys to have an opportunity to incorporate your own creative aspect is really makes my day and it makes this just your park because it is it's your lucky lakes park at the end of the day to end the adventure ride we come over here and we start building an aztec temple obviously high budget because you wouldn't see something like this in a normal theme park or a budget park but you know obviously we got to kick it up a little bit lucky lakes getting a little popular here at the end of the 50s and getting in some new attractions so we built a aztec temple obviously this would be a pinnacle ride and would be a classic for all the disney vloggers and anybody that's vlogging in planet coaster to come over here and critique this talk about how classic it is and it's still running um so that's what i wanted to do i added in some crocodiles and some leaves and some vines and some lily pads and all those little things that make this pop. And even at nighttime going in with some rocks and some lights, I don't know why I said nighttime and rocks, but there is rocks here regardless. Um, and then going down the fence so when you're on the outside of the park, you can even see it here. We're not gonna cover up the outside of the uh, park. And we did a lot of trees on the outside as well for the jungle uh, vibe of this. To do the final flat ride we are going to do today, which is the bumper cars ride, we are going to actually just duplicate our original uh, building. Obviously, these two rides would have been built at the same time for the same budget, just a different housing on the inside, and give the guests something new to look at and something fun to ride. Uh, bumper car is super simple, one of the classic rides you would see in a park like this. We do a quick switch back or a cattle pen, add a little bit of an umbrella for the guests to stay, you know, stay dry or the, uh, the worker to stay dry. Come in with the lighting passes. I'm a big fan of lighting because I like to see my parks at nighttime. Obviously, we're gonna do some fireworks shows here early on, get a little bit of a start. I'm not gonna show that in this video fireworks show we're working on and then behind the swift drifters or clowns the clown we added in another food court with bathrooms and a staff room because they are definitely complaining about bathrooms and staff are definitely getting way too far from their posts to do their own things and this is also where we make one of our first work zones we actually have one already but we made another work zone here so that the these attendants will stay in this section and just make sure that everything over here is clean and up to date and guests are getting accommodated. Disney also suggested, Disney One TV suggested that we make a little pathway over here, which was a great suggestion for the guests to sort of get away from the action, take back, chill with the kids. And we do add in a little uh, park for the kids to play in as well. You'll see that on the close-up time-lapse video later. And the one thing that I always seem to forget, but I always enjoy doing, is doing the backstage areas of the park. So letting us have a little bit of realism in here, you know, unloading the food, uh, getting our staff parking, and all those little things that make our park come alive and make it realistic. And being a budget park, we don't even really have to hide it too much. We go with the go-away green fences over here, and then we add in some parking for our subscribers, people that are watching live on Twitch, and all those other great people. So if you want to be a part of the um, the staff parking, please let us know. Just come out to the stream, say hi, and we'll make it happen, especially if you come out to all the streams and comment on the videos you can. We're going to jump into a live section just right now, so I'll let you play out the music, and I'll see you in a second.
Fredlings, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse, and I was just going to end it like normal. But I wanted to do a walkthrough here on episode 4 because we did so much work and we're finally done between our 1921 to our 1959 section of the park. We came through here real quickly, I'm not going to go too in depth, but we put a little quick lighting pass on our car park. We also gave a nice little section here for our subscribers and some of our viewers that watched it live. So if you want to have a VIP parking spot, feel free to come through. So we have a raid over here, we have Sap Daddy with 15 hours, then we have our subscribers over here, which are at the end of every video, having their nice little things. I know Liam likes his uh, Back to the Future, and that's the 1955 car. So this is this is our little backstage area. Has a little cargo coming on in, dropping off the ice cream. Then over here we did a little bit more work, and you could see the back of the Rio Grande ride, which is pretty awesome because it kind of keeps the theming here. And then some more staff parking and another garbage bin, which is super awesome. I really like how this all turned out. But when we come inside, nothing really has changed through here throughout the videos. Just added a few bits of lighting. Um, you can see the beautiful Rio Grande adventure ride right outside Simon's Bar. So you can hear all that and maybe get a little splash of water while drinking at nighttime. Nothing too crazy. But on today's episode, we came over here and we added in Clowns of the Clown, making children scream since 1935 which is one of the original flat rides of the park, which was built after the wooden coaster, uh, the Baroness. But it's a pretty simple, it looks very popular. There's a lot of people here. There's no fast pass allowed in this. We'll come to this ride a little bit later on. We also came through here, Disney TV came in and suggested that we make a little pathway down here, which we need to do a quick little lightning pass, which I'll do later. But we did add in a playground with one of the adventure boats here so that the kids can come over here and playground. That's what you see at a lot of parks and even at Disney. Um, and I added ATM over here as well so people would um, come down here, which it looks like this family has. But yeah, it's really nice, you know, just come back here, play with the kids, have a nice little picnic over here. There's enough to see. It's now covered by trees, but still a nice probably calming area and then right behind clowns of the clown we have ourselves our first vending machine over here with a not a high win rate 40 percent and then we have ourselves some uh pip shop water because of the park sponsor gulpy soda chief beef hot dog squad a bathroom and another staff room over here because we are definitely struggling on staff rooms and bathrooms but that should take care of a lot of customers needs they all come down here for these and then some of them will come over to our new ride that we added in which is the bumper cars and this has been steadily increasing because these signs over here the guests always come over here for the food they see these signs and these signs are actually linked to this ride over here so people will come over and uh uh you know take part in the uh, bumper cars over here we have ourselves our first dock and in the description down below you could find the link to these assets here but it is a budget park so you would see a lot of these things here um, just like on the pier or around the park so we have ski ball we have the water shooter as well um, there's also vista points here so this is why these people are walking in place they're trying to get to that vista point but they're having a little bit of hard time doing that we have ring toss as well as down the skull not down the clown but i wish it was down the clown but these are here for the guests so they can come down here and take part in um, this is our beautiful dock and inside here there is a additional uh, gulpy soda Monstrous fries, which kind of look like churros to be quite honest with you. <laughs> they kind of look like churros. Oh, she waved to me. Hi. Uh, we have another staff room and a bathroom so guests can come on in and go over here. Eventually, we'll have some more traction once we uh, connect this dock to a, another island. Over here is probably our least profitable and least seen thing, which is our restaurant, which sells sushi and has an ATM inside so guests can come out here and eat and tr relax. We also have a beautiful new Ferris wheel here in the park, another least ridden ride. Just not a lot of 
company coming down here. These guys are just having just a nice, solid break. Uh, maybe this would be closed by like 9 o'clock or something. This the Star Wheel, which is uh, uh, pretty much the same one they have in Disney World. It's actually quite large looking at it from this angle. Because I always see it from the other angle. That is huge. I, I would love to go on this ride and take a nice look at the park. But as in the thumbnail, and you see here, we have the great Rio Grande Adventure which has a splash zone included and photo op. So you can stand right here where guests will stand and they will actually cover up when the ride comes down and they get splashed. So when you come inside, these signs were made by Meep Meep, uh, both of them. And there's a long budget, you know, a long hour long queue for this. And then, you know, these wooden logs were ordered in development, you know, by the big contractors, Moshe, Nosha, and Osha. But you get a nice bit of splash here, even on the queue to come on down. So you come all the way down here, you go up on a ramp, there's another splash zone here. Let's see if we can wait and see if somebody will come across. This is one of my favorite little rides we have made in quite a while. But there's so many little details and all these little things here, which makes this park so awesome. It's obviously popping off. The fast pass queue over here as well. Guests will come in, in and they'll be able to skip the line and they will still see the lights and the Habibi's wheel and all the little things before they go on the ride itself. But this is what we've done here in our first 19, uh, or sorry, 1921 to 1980, 1959. Sorry, I don't know why I couldn't say that. But this is what we have done. This is our section finally completed. I love how this turned out. We got so many positive reviews. And I cannot wait to see what we build next in our next section over here, which will be the 60s to the late 80s. And then over here, our new modern zone. So we're going to throw this into some glamour shots. But before we do that, I want to give a massive shout out to our Twitch subscribers, tip donators, bit donators, and our future merchandise holders. Thank you so much, Fredlings, for coming out to another time lapse video here on Lucky Lakes. Remember, all these videos are streamed on Twitch at Claude from Chicago. So come out, say hi, and give some influence here. Even if you can't come out to the stream, comment down below on what you want to see next in our 60s section to the end of the 80s. We are going to show you these rest of these glamour shots here in our beautiful park. And then this is the Rio Grande adventure, which I'm just going to let the beautiful game and let you ride the ride. And I will see you, Fredlings, next time. And remember, a real Fredling makes their own love.